Hello everyone and welcome to the match you've all been waiting for. It's uh, the 1971 candidates, uh, fi the finals of the 1971 candidates, Robert James Fisher versus Tigran Vartanovic Petrosian. Uh, definitely a clash of titans, but uh, before we check it out, we do have a photo challenge. It's not so much of a photo challenge, uh, because if you follow my instructions, you will realize that it's not actually a photo challenge. So I will ask you who is the person in the photo here. Uh, but uh, the thing is next, uh, she's a singer from Chile. Uh, Yuga di Prima, and if you follow the link in the description below, you will uh, uh, you will uh, uh, be led to a song. Now, uh, I don't usually promote songs on this channel, uh, but she wrote a song about former world chess champion uh, Jose Roll Capablanca, and uh, I thought, you know, you guys should know about it. It's not every day that someone writes a song about Jose Roll Capablanca, even though, yes, he was a world chess champion, and he was a fairly handsome guy. Uh, so, you know, you'd think, you know, people write songs about him all the time, but, you know, uh, reality is they don't. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's a very nice song, I thought you'd enjoy it, but the, the real challenge is, uh, the song is about, uh, is about <laughs> one of his games, so uh, try to figure out which game uh, the song is referring to. So there we have it, that's the challenge, now back to our game. Uh, let's check out some of the photos uh, from this matchup uh, here, not of the highest quality, but I'm sure you will appreciate it. Uh, Fischer arrived to, to Buenos Aires, uh, where he shakes hands with Tigran Petrosian before the match. And here uh, we have a nice uh, photo uh, b before the match started. There you have it. Petrosian posing for the photo, as Petrosian always poses uh, for the photo. Uh, that's something you can... If you Google Tig Tigran Petrosian, Tigran Vartanovic Petrosian, and uh, check out his photos, you will see that he's always posing for a photo. That's, that's the kind of guy Tigran Petrosian was. So, uh, about this match, uh, like we said, we started this journey with the 1970 uh, Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament, which uh, happened some 10 months ago uh, prior to this match. So, the 1970 Palma de Mallorca Interzonal was in November of 1970, and now we are in September 1971. So, 10 months have passed since Fisher, since Fisher started this epic journey. And uh, as you know, uh, after, you know, crushing the field in Palma de Mallorca, then he defeated Mark Taimanov 6-0, uh, then he defeated Bent Larsen 6-0, so basically uh, Fischer won 19 uh, of his last games that he played in a row. Uh, but, you know, Tigran Petrosian also, uh, out of the 42 games uh, he played, uh, he only lost two. So it's not that he won so much games, but it, you can see that it's very hard to beat Tigran Petrosian. And uh, although, okay, his uh, semi-final match versus uh, Viktor Korchnoi uh, was really, really a close call. Uh, he only won one game against Viktor Korchnoi, and that was enough to conclude the match. Uh, so although, uh, you know, we can agree that uh, former world champion Tigran Petrosian is uh, the strongest uh, of Fischer's opponents, you know, he proves it by being in the finals. Uh, but also when you hear Tigran Petrosian, you know, you, you have the utmost respect for the guy. So I'm sure you'll enjoy this game. This is the first game of their match uh, where Petrosian actually goes uh, on an all-out attack against Fischer. You know, <laughs> he doesn't go with his usual style, uh, but rather prepares a very nice novelty in one of Fischer's uh, favorite lines of the Sicilian. So without further ado, uh, Fischer sits at the board and he opens with, well, what else? Uh, E4. Uh, Petrosian uh, plays c5. Now, uh, yesterday, I believe, I posted a game uh, Fischer played against Petrosian. Uh, it was the match USSR versus the rest of the world. Uh, so, uh, if you've seen that game, you, you, you've seen how Fischer demolished him. And that's uh, the last game two of them played before meeting here. So, Petrosian changes his approach. He goes for the Sicilian. Uh, we have knight to f3, e6, d4. C captures on d4, knight captures, knight to c6, uh, and now uh, after Petrosian chooses the Taimano variation, we have knight to b5. Uh, Fischer uh, follows the same path uh, he played uh, against Mark Taimanov uh, in game 6 of their match. So we have d6, uh, bishop to f4, and now e5. Bishop back to e3, and now knight to f6. So uh, the same move order uh, as Fischer had against Taimanov. Uh, so we, uh, I'm just going to mention it once more. Uh, this is the position from the famous game uh, Morphy versus Anderson, where Anderson pushed f5, uh, and then after knight c3, f4, uh, Morphy proceeded with knight d5, and, uh, you know, achieved the great brilliance against Anderson and took his uh, king for a nice walk. Uh, you might have seen it on my channel. If you haven't, I will put a link to it in the description below, you know, just if you want to further increase your vast knowledge. But okay, knight to f6, same, in, same as in the game against Mark Taimanov, bishop to g5, and now e, bishop to e6. 
uh, knight c3, a6, knight, uh, we have a bishop captures on f6, g captures on f6, and knight to a3. So this is the exact same position Fisher had uh, on the board against Mark Taimanov in their candidates match. And uh, here you have, uh, you know, a lot of lines were familiar in those days. Uh, for example, knight to d4 is the move Taimanov played against Fisher, and also a couple of years before that, uh, also... Uh, and Nidorf uh, tried this uh, against Fischer. And also it's uh, there is a known game between Taimanov and Karpov where Taimanov also tried this, uh, uh, not knight d4, but rather knight e7 against Karpov, and Karpov won this game. So a lot of things, uh, you know, a lot of moves uh, were tried in this position, but uh, the move Petrosian played uh, was never played in this position. Well, perhaps it was, but not in high competition, so uh, people would know about it. Uh, it, a lot, you know, it was not in the database, although in those days there wasn't like a digital database, uh, but, uh, well, you know what I mean. Uh, Petrosian played d5, and this is a very interesting uh, concept. Now, I'm sure a lot of players thought about this move, uh, you know, before, uh, because it's a well-known uh, idea. If you, if, if you can push d5 uh, and you're playing the Sicilian and uh, white can't take advantage of it, then you're definitely doing okay. Uh, so what what do you do here? Okay, Fisher played e captures on d5, the strongest reply, and now we have bishop captures on a3. So there are a couple of uh, things you can decide to do here. So what do you do? Uh, you have to capture the bishop. Uh, if you try some uh, wild idea like d captures uh, on e6, you're going to lose the bishop captures on b2. Uh, but it's not at all clear like uh, immediately how do you lose. For example, e captures on f7 with check. Uh, you don't capture. You go king to f8 and now knight to e4. You try to give up this rook, uh, but uh, black isn't interested. Black would go queen to a5 check. Uh, now you have to block knight to d2, and then you get rook to d8. And uh, now you see the problem. Uh, if you try and save the rook, then bishop comes here, and uh, there's no saving uh, the knight, or even even you don't even have to uh, pin it. You can simply play rook captures, and now it's game over. Black won, because if you capture, then bishop c3 wins the queen. Uh, on the other hand, after this rook to d8 move, if you try something like, uh, well, not that, but let's say bishop to d3, uh, black has this very simple e4 move, which uh, now creates a nice pin. Uh, the knight can capture because it's pinned. Uh, if you uh, capture with the bishop, then you get the same idea, rook captures on d2. So here, white would be without a choice, and you would simply, let's say, capture the rook. Uh, knight captures and then play bishop back and you grab the piece and you are winning here so it's uh, you have to prepare this but i'm sure fisher at some point uh, thoroughly analyzed this position uh, i don't think d5 was uh, like a move he never thought about could happen in this position so okay he played b captures on a3 uh, we have queen to a5 now a very nice move uh, th these uh, pieces are still under attack, but queen captures on c3 would come with tempo. So, okay, queen to d2, and here Petrosian castles queen side. Now, again, you cannot capture here, because now, uh, of course, again, you would lose the queen. So, a very rich position uh, happened here. Uh, we have bishop to c4 by Fisher. he prepares uh, to castle king side, and now comes rook h to g8. So, now you can see that uh, Petrosian really plays a beautiful chess here, very active uh, uh, you know, his pieces are very active. Uh, he has a semi-open G file, and uh, here Fisher plays rook to D1. He increases uh, the protection of his D-pawn, and still, okay, he still can't capture anything, but he's just waiting to see what uh, what Petrosian will do. And here he invites Petrosian to capture on G2. And uh, although it seems like the, the, the best idea, for some reason Petrosian uh, isn't interested in the pawn. For example, if rook captures on G2, uh, it's not, uh, it seems that Petrosian didn't analyze it all the way to here. Uh, because now, after knight e4, offering a queen trade, of course, black will decline. Uh, now you uh, offer to trade queens yet again. And now, after queen captures, f captures, and this bishop to g4 move, you can see that Petrosian now uh, untangles, and still Fisher will not be able to capture here because of this rook to d1 uh, threat. And after you move, rook captures, uh, you can't capture with the king because of bishop to f3. Uh, knight would have to capture, and then after knight e7, you can see that now uh, all, all is well for black here. Uh, but still, it's, uh, it's hard to make a call like this. He, perhaps he didn't enjoy this position, uh, to play this position against Fisher. So okay, he keeps uh, all the tension on the board, he plays bishop to f5. 
we have bishop to d3 challenging the bishop, bishop captures, queen captures, and now comes uh, knight to d4. So okay, still uh, everything is uh, on the board, and here Fisher castles, a very nice move, uh, showing that he's not afraid of the of the semi-open g file. Uh, here uh, king to b8, uh, a very important move because now uh, this is actually an attacking move. Well, it's a defending move, but also an attacking move. Uh, if Fisher is not careful here, and for example, plays something like h3, uh, do you see how Black wins the game here instantly? Uh, you know, feel free to pause the video and try to find it. It's a, it's a very nice idea, one you can often use your, in your own games. Uh, so for those of you who have found it, congratulations, you are an excellent player. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, queen captures on c3. A temporary queen sacrifice after white accepts, knight e2 check, simply picks up the queen and it's all over. Uh, white, uh, black is up a piece and uh, winning the game. So okay, after king to b8, Petrosian prepares this and now Fisher goes king to h1, not allowing knight e2 to come with check. So okay, uh, queen captures on a3. Here... Uh, Petrosian could have continued with ideas like uh, rook to g6. This would have probably been best. Uh, uh, pile, you know, uh, try to double up on the g file and then try pushing the h pawn to open up uh, Fisher's king side. Uh, but here instead he goes for this queen captures on a3 move. And this allows Fisher uh, some counterplay. So here Fisher pushes f4. f4 is a very nice idea because it allows both rooks to come uh, into defense of the, of the g2 pawn and also attacks Petrosian's center. So, okay, rook to c8, attacking Fisher's uh, knight on c3, and now Fisher has to move the knight. Knight to e4, offer a queen trade, and uh, here, again, you have to see what, what do you want to do here. Do you want to trade queens, or do you want to play something like queen captures on a2? Queen captures on a2 is very interesting, because now after rook to d2, uh, you go into this variation. Uh, rook captures, rook captures, queen captures, queen captures, uh, knight captures. And now knight captures on f6, uh, threatening the rook on g8. Rook moves, and now pawn captures on e5. And uh, you would have this position where the material on the board is equal, uh, but uh, Fisher's position with the two uh, central pawns already uh, on the fifth rank uh, will be will be uh, somewhat better. And uh, these pawns are very weak. You can see that Fisher has two pawn islands, and Petrosian would have three pawn islands. So not something you want to do. So instead, Petrosian trades queens here. Queen captures on d3, c captures on d3, and now rook to c2. Again, with a lot of pressure uh, against Fisher's king side. Uh, rook to d2, uh, defending the g2 pawn and also defending the a2 pawn. Uh, rook captures, knight captures, and here uh, f5 was played. Uh, a move like, uh, for example, rook to d8 going after the pawn immediately would be met with captures on e5. Captures on e5 and now captures on f7. Uh, here h5, not allowing to capture, but rook to h7. Rook captures, rook captures on h5, and here uh, Fisher would be up a pawn, but also he would have two connected pass pawns on the king side. Uh, so okay, after knight d2 we have f5. Uh, Petrosin tries uh, this idea, sorry about that. Uh, we have f captures on e5 and now rook to e8, attacking the e5 pawn. Uh, rook to e1, Fisher defends the pawn and now comes knight to c2, uh, attacking Fisher's rook. Uh, and here, uh, after rook to e2, uh, Petrosin repeats, uh, rook to, uh, knight to d4, we have rook to e3 and uh, knight to c2. Here Petrosin would uh, very much enjoy a draw and I believe uh, he even offered a draw here. Uh, but Fisher declined it, uh, and he played rook to h3. And it's very important to know that uh, Petrosian took really, really uh, a lot of time for for most of his moves. Uh, they say that he even took uh, 25 minutes for some moves. So Fisher was really, really ahead on clock here, and they still needed to make 10 more moves to reach time control. So okay, Petrosian plays rook captures on e5. Fisher finds a very nice way how to continue the struggle, and now knight to f3. A very important move uh, guarding d1 square. Uh, from uh, uh, from checkmate uh, and uh, also preparing now to capture on h7. Uh, rook captures on d5 and now rook captures on h7. Rook captures on d3 and now h4. Uh, Fisher creates some breeding uh, room for the king, now the knight can move uh, and also uh, he can start pushing his own pass pawn. Uh, because now you can see that it's actually Petrosian who is up a pawn, but Fisher is the one that has uh, uh, the outside pass pawn, and of course, when you have a pass pawn, you have to push it because pass pawns uh, must be pushed. Uh, so, okay, knight to e3 uh, by Petrosian. He wants to now grab the a2 pawn and uh, try to 
uh, start pushing his own queenside pawns. You can't really uh, play rook to d7 to protect the f7 pawn because the f7 pawn is pretty much worthless here. Fisher will simply push h5 and say, okay, you now have a rook guarding the useless f7 pawn. I'm just going to push my own passed pawn to victory. Uh, so after h4, knight to e3 was played. Uh, we have rook captures on f7, rook to d1 check, king to h2, and now rook to a2. Uh, okay, Fisher pushes h5, and here uh, a move like rook captures on a2 would have been best for Petrosian, uh, and then after, because the g2 pawn is threatened, knight to h5 comes defending, and now rook to a5. And this would have been the best uh, uh, choice, because now uh, h6 isn't possible, because knight to g4 check would pick up the pawn. Uh, but, like we said, Petrosian was very low on time, and here he played f4. He decided to sacrifice this pawn, uh, and he thought that he would be able to hold this, but uh, that's, that couldn't be farther from the, from the truth. Uh, Fisher simply captured the pawn, rook captures on f4, we have rook captures on a2, now threatening the g2 pawn, and here he probably thought that, okay, if you push h6, then I'm just gonna capture on g2, king h3, rook g8, h7, rook h8, okay, my rook is passive, but I'm defending here. Let's say knight g5, defending the pawn, and now a5, uh, b5 is coming, a4 is coming. Petrosian would have a passive rook, but he would also start pushing his own queenside pawns. Probably due to the time trouble, this was Petrosian's idea. But Fisher plays rook to e4, and now uh, you're, uh, you're in a lot of trouble here. Uh, what do you do here? Now you can no longer play rook captures on g3. Uh, on g2 because of after king h3 your rook is under attack and the knight so if you move the knight you lose the rook and if you don't do anything simply rook captures knight uh you would lose a piece here you, you would have to move and after rook to e2 defending the knight now you would get h6 and you would have this funny rook uh, defending your funny knight uh, but okay, it's uh, still not all that clear what to do here after this rook to e4 move. Uh, if you try rook to a5 immediately, you could uh, still kind of continue the struggle, but not really. You lose the knight here, and then after rook captures on h5 with check, king to g3 is coming, and here you could hope that your two connected pass pawns on the queen side uh, uh, are, you know, substitution enough for, for, for a whole piece. Uh, but still, white would be better here and most likely win this. Uh, but okay, after this knight captures on g2 move, uh, after this move, uh, Petrosian played knight captures on g2, but uh, it's still not enough. Uh, Fisher played king to g3, now getting out of any uh, unnecessary discoveries. Uh, rook to a5 was played, and here, uh, of course, Fisher did not capture the knight. If king captures, then rook captures on h5. Uh, you have zero pawns now as white, and uh, two, two connected pass pawns on the queen side will be uh, enough compensation for the piece. So you, white would not be able to win this, even though he's up a piece. Uh, so after this rook to a5 move, Fisher simply played knight to e5, uh, and now in this position, Petrosian resigned the game because there is uh, nothing he can do. Uh, this pawn is uh, going to be promoted to a queen, but even worse than that, uh, the knight is trapped. The knight has nowhere to go. Uh, the rook uh, and king are nicely guarding all of the squares the knight can jump to, so there's really nothing to do here anymore. Uh, of course, if you if you if you try and protect the knight, then simply h6, and uh, again you have a funny rook uh, guarding a funny knight. So yeah, after knight to e5, this is move 40, so uh, Petrosian uh, did, <laughs> didn't even reach time control. Here, Fisher played knight to e5, and here it's very important to say that uh, uh, Petrosian had a couple of seconds on the clock, and I don't know if uh, his clock uh, time on the clock ran out or, or if he resigned uh, with only a couple of seconds on the clock, but uh, Fisher had over, over half an hour uh, on his clock in this position. So yeah. Uh, Fisher played knight e5 on, on the 40th move, and uh, Petrosian resigned the game, so Fisher continues his legendary streak, making this his 20th victory in a row, and it couldn't be greater achieving his 20th victory in a row against top grandmasters, uh, against a former world champion such as Tigran Petrosian. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game, I do hope you enjoyed it, and uh, you know, hope you're enjoying the Bobby Fisher series so far, it's very interesting. Uh, I was contacted by uh, a subscriber of mine who works uh, in a theater in Buenos Aires where this match took place, and he said that he will send me some photos. So uh, I saved. Uh, I, I will try to show you some of the photos of the place where they played and uh, try to compare it with, uh, you know, the older photos so you can see the comparison in, in some other videos of this match. 
So yeah, uh, I would like to thank James Norwood, uh, Ben Ohiti, PM The Graf, uh, Mario Encinosa, Sarah Weston, and uh, George Nitsis for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, hopefully, with another interesting video. And uh, do check out the song about <laughs> Jose Roll Capablanca uh, in the description below and try to figure out uh, from which game the song <laughs> is, uh, which game the song refers to. Uh, so yeah, thank you all, and I'll see you soon.